In Color, the continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Doctor's Hospital, Peyton Place, morning. A young woman has been sleeping fitfully on a corridor bench most of the night. She came here in search of a baby, a very ill baby, that she claims is her own. Hospital procedure is strict, however, and she must wait for the baby's attending physician, Dr. Michael Rossi. Good morning, Dr. Rossi. Good morning. Calling Dr. Green. Calling Dr. Green. The mother of the baby girl. She showed up last night and insisted on waiting for you. Dr. Rossi? You spent the night here? They wouldn't let me see my baby without your permission. I didn't have any place else to go. Well, do me a favor, will you? Give me about five minutes to get organized. I, I just got off the plane from Boston. Why can't I see my baby while you're getting organized? <sighs> Come in here. I just as soon see my baby first. If it's all the same to you. Well, it's not all the same to me. If it's all the same to you. Calling Dr. Richards. Calling Dr. Richards. Are you the girl that called the hospital? Yes. How did you know my name and why did you ask for Dr. Rossi? Are you trying to drive me crazy deliberately? Oh, come on. Answer the question, will you? The last time I saw my baby, she was very sick. In fact, I thought she was dying or I wouldn't have called you. That nurse out there won't tell me if she's alive or dead. That's some kind of an exaggeration, isn't it? She's in intensive care. How do I know what that means? Come on, that's not the question. The question is, how do I know that you are the mother of the baby? What? Well, be because I am. Do you have a birth certificate? No. Where were you the other night when I picked up the baby at the side of Arrow? I was... Where? I was afraid you might not take her if you found out I didn't have any money. Oh, come on, that's nonsense. You're not the mother of the baby. I mean, abandoning a sick child in a diner in the middle of the night, that's not a maternal act. She's got a mole on her left hand right here, and her left foot curls up a little bit more than her right one does. It's been worrying me. And she can laugh. She'll laugh if you blow on her tummy. Well, most every baby will laugh if you blow on their tummy. But you see, I'm not denying that you know the child. What I question is, is that you're his mother. It's hard for me to accept all this sudden concern. What's your name? Jill. Jill Smith. All right, Mrs. Smith. Miss. I take it you're trying to tell me that the father's name is not Smith. That's right. I don't suppose uh, your parent's name is Smith either. Right. You stupid, stupid kid. We're talking about my baby. Look, I don't know how to prove to you she's mine. I can. But just on the chance that she might be, why won't you let me see her? I mean, what are you, a sadist or something? Miss Smith, you have a very sharp isn't terrible the way this young generation is so disrespectful. Just like that. Well, do you want to see the baby or don't you? She's 
going to be all right, isn't she? Well, it's uh, a little early to tell. She's a fighter. What's wrong with her? It isn't something you can't cure, is it? It's an acute lung congestion, aggravated by the baby's general condition. General condition? You're not asking me to believe the baby's yours and you didn't realize it was suffering from severe malnutrition. Now, surely you knew. Unwed mothers. According to them, if you nurse your baby, both of you form all sorts of subconscious attachments, which isn't good if the baby's going to be adopted. And where I was, all the babies were up for sale. Except yours. I stole her. Are you going to turn me in? Should I? Well, she was only two weeks old, and they don't put them up for adoption until they're over a month. It wasn't as if I were taking her away from anybody. I was the only one who cared anything about her. Or even knew she existed. Except the nurses, and to them she was just another baby who shouldn't have been born. Where'd you take her? Away. Well, where? Where'd you go? The bus station. Jill, what bus station? We've seen 35 states. Wow, wow. 35 states, huh? <laughs> It's quite a joyride. Eh? Except you almost killed your child in rallies. No. You don't know how expensive formula is. I kept running out of money. She was sick so much of the time. I couldn't work. I couldn't leave her with anyone. She'd cry so much. She'd cry for hours. She was getting so much better up until a couple of days ago. She wasn't crying nearly as much. Well, babies never cry as much. When they're starved, they don't have the strength to cry. Why are you being so cruel? Now you listen to me. It's time you stopped acting like a child and started acting like the mother you are. You're the one that's been cruel, incredibly cruel to this baby. I want you to face that. Then I want you to tell me who the father is, how I can contact him, and how I can contact your parents. And if I won't? Well, then you just have a hard time convincing me to release her to you when she's well. What would you do with her? The juvenile bureau's equipped for that, or I could contact your parents anyway. You don't want to contact them. They don't want to have anything to do with her. They don't want me to have anything to do with her. And her father doesn't even know she exists, much less care. Dr. Rossi, she's my baby, not my parents, not anybody else's. Nobody's going to love her like I do. Nobody, ever. And she needs to be loved. Come to my office. Miss Choate, Miss Choate, pick up on line four, please. Well, come on, come on. to roll out the carpet for me, Les. This isn't a formal visit. Where do you get your nerve, Eddie? I knew it. Ever since you came howling into the tavern the other night, I've been worried about you. I'll bet you have. I kept saying to myself that Les, he's really teed off, and at me. And he's gonna let it lay there and fester and gnaw away at him until someday he's gonna do something that he's really sorry about. Don't be too sure. 
About what? That I'd be sorry. But, lads, the wharf is full of dark corners, and every time I take out the garbage or, or grab a smoke, I expect you to come jumping out of one of them. You know? I got a sore neck from looking over my shoulder. Now, neither one of us needs that kind of a strain. No strain on me, Eddie. Look, I'm not a hawk. I'm a chicken. I couldn't kill the old man. That's why I had to, to make some other arrangement for our little deal. For me. You no. sold him my promissory note. Yeah. Well, I tried. I got all the way to the house, and I had Weber's wrench in my pocket. We've been all through that, Eddie. And I froze. You call it, uh, well, indigestion or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. And how much did your indigestion net you? Well, I broke even. The same amount that you were going to pay me for killing him. 50000 Well, that confirms something I've suspected all along, Eddie. You're a piker. You could have tripled that by handing the old man my scalp. But I'm not greedy. I just want to put a little something aside for the kids. The kids? Don't hide behind the kids. You came crawling back here because your daughter married my son and you smelled money. And that bloodhound's nose of yours led you right to Martin Payton's wallet. All right, Eddie, you've had your turn. Now it's mine. There's one thing I've always been known for, and that's paying my debts. And I owe you a lot, Eddie. And that's how, uh, how we leave it now, huh? For now. No, no. There's something else. There's something else that you've got to face, Les. Yourself. Just between you and me, Les. When you found out that Peyton wasn't dead, didn't you feel just a wee bit relieved? And didn't you feel that great big ball of fear in your throat disappear? We're in the same league, you and me. We're a couple of scared nobodies talking about murder like it was something that you'd find on a menu. And neither one of us able to swallow it, now or then. Lee Weber took me out of that league, Eddie. I pulled the trigger, and it's not that hard. And I don't suffer from conscience or indigestion. The only thing that stopped me from killing Lee Weber was my aim.